Hello there and welcome. Tim Warner here, welcoming you to a brief lesson called the Azure Log Analytics Query Playground. Azure Log Analytics is known by several names. <laughs> you can see in the Azure documentation it most currently being referenced as Log Queries in Azure Monitor, but I've also seen in the docs Log Analytics in Azure Monitor. Regardless of what we're talking about in terms of its specific name of the week, I want you to understand that Azure Log Analytics provides a centralized platform for interactive diagnostic log search. Now, if you're wondering about the mechanics under the hood, in other words, how to create and curate an Azure Log Analytics workspace, let me know in the comments of this video post, and I'm happy to put up a tutorial. But what I want to do here in this lesson is turn you on to the Azure Log Analytics Query Playground because it's a free demo environment where you can get up to speed with the Azure Log Analytics query language, which is called Custo Query Language, or KQL. Now, from what I understand, I've asked a lot of folks at Microsoft about how they came to this name. I geek out on that kind of stuff. That Custo Query Language is, well, it's for data exploration, and supposedly Custo, K-U-S-T-O, is reminiscent of Jacques Cousteau, the French explorer, so hence the link with exploration. The Microsoft engineers evidently were using this. They designed this language for internal use for data exploration from within Microsoft across different data sources, different types of databases, different types of log file data. And they developed Custo query language to be familiar if you already have experience using other query languages like the Splunk SPL, the structured query language we use with relational databases. There are similarities with KQL and PowerShell and certainly some elements of Bash shell scripting. I say all this because the future of Azure monitoring really lies in your mastering the KQL language because the idea with Log Analytics Workspace is that you can send your virtual machines, your on-premises machines, all of their diagnostic log data into your workspace elsewhere in your Azure subscription. I don't care whether we're talking about VMs or app service diagnostics or storage accounts or event grids. You can send all of that resource diagnostic log data into one place and then use KQL to report across all of your resources and solutions. The process of doing this monitoring with Azure Log Analytics starts by creating the Log Analytics workspace. We can look at that as a data warehouse. We then onboard Azure Resources, and as I said, I'm happy to cover that in a separate tutorial. And then you write queries, and you can pull down the query results as CSV files. You can display charts. You can export to Power BI. Let me go into the demo, and I'll show you. But the first thing is I want you to note this URL. The Query Playground URL is portal.loganalytics.io forward slash demo. Now, you'll be using Microsoft's resources here. They've got so much data in their demo log analytics workspace. You do have to sign in. It's an authenticated site, so sign in using your Azure AD account. But otherwise, it's open to the public, and it's there for your learning and exploration at no cost to you. So let me show you. Once you hit the Azure Log Analytics Query Playground URL and you sign in, with your Azure AD account, you will see the query workspace. And let me get you up to speed. Of course, you'll have this available in your subscription once you create a workspace. But what's great about the Query Playground is that it's already populated with an absurd amount of data. First of all, notice that this is a multi-query interface. You can bring out as many query tabs as you want and then get rid of them by clicking the Close button. On the left side, we can dock the tables list. One of the coolest things about Log Analytics is that when you send your resource diagnostics logs into the workspace, Azure Log Analytics rationalizes that data as these virtual tables. And the data is rationalized not just for your traditional virtual machine diagnostics logs and your resource diagnostic settings that you enable in Azure Monitor, but as you greenlight and onboard different Azure solutions like change tracking, notice that that diagnostic data stream also can show up in Log Analytics as this virtual table, as I said. And you can click the little I to show sample data for that table. And then these are the virtual column names. So we're able to get a semi-relational structure from all of those disparate data sources. That's pretty sweet. Let me get rid of this. I want to show you that 
over here on the toolbar, if we go to Query Explorer, this is where I suggest you check out first. There's a bunch of pre-done queries here that are just, there's a favorites list. And you can, in your own subscription, create your own Query Explorer with your own favorites and your saved queries, et cetera, et cetera. These are just from Microsoft. I'm going to choose this first one here, syslog, where severity level equals error. And we can change the time range instead of just last 24 hours. We can, for instance, show the last seven days. And the results show up down below. Let me scroll up a little bit. I apologize for the cramped screen. This is just a function of my resolution. You notice that the data can dynamically be rendered either as a table or as a time chart. Now, this isn't going to look particularly good as a time chart, so there's no point in taking a look there. Notice that you can do a filter directly on the columns by clicking the filter icon. And if you open the columns drop down, this allows you to optionally group and also select or deselect columns from the result set. Now, how does the Custo query language work? First of all, you see the call is to a particular table. There's a virtual table in your schema here called syslog, and you can type that to immediately jump to that table. And then within that virtual table, as I said, there are the properties that are effectively columns, and you can select particular columns by using the project statement. So for instance, if I come to the end of the query and add a pipe, Notice that the log query interface gives us some autocomplete help. And as you start to type, you can just tab to complete. Now, project is the equivalent of the select statement in the structured query language. So we might say, just show me the computer, event time, and severity level columns. I'm just putting that ad hoc as we're going on here. And that gives us quite a few records. And you can see over on the right some metadata about how long it took to run the query and how many records are returned. Even this might not get you close enough to where you want to be in the results of your log search. So I want to draw your attention to over here on the left, filter. And this is really sweet because before you get up to speed with KQL, you can take advantage of this faceted search, as you can see. And in this case, just show me records from this Azure Kubernetes Services host pool that deal with host IP 10.240.05. And let's see, process name is kernel. And then we can click apply and run. And what happens by using the graphical filter tools over on the left is that Azure will help you construct the query over on the right. You can see it start to fill in. So the general flow, like I said, once again, is the virtual table name and then using pipes to string together your various clauses. You can adjust the time range. You run the query and you're off and running. Let's go back to the Query Explorer. And let me see if I can find something interesting here under perf, maybe. Available memory per hour. This is a good example here. Now, we can put comments in these queries using C-sharp comment syntax. And this is useful when you decide to build a library of saved queries and you're sharing these KQL queries with your team members. So what's this doing? Available memory per hour for Contoso computers. So this is saying, tell me if you find that this query is easy to understand. It's saying in the perf table, which I can tell you is the table that keeps track of all of your Windows machines performance monitor counter data, where the time generated was at least one day ago. The computer name starts with Contoso. The counter name is available megabytes, and we're doing a summarization, and we're rendering this as a time chart. Pretty sweet. And notice that you can change the properties of that time chart just by using the controls, as you see down here. Very nice and very convenient indeed to be able to do that. So you notice here, once you've got the results you want, let's say we wanted to go back to the table view. This isn't a particularly good table idea. Let's go back to our syslog example. Once you've run the query and you've got it set up exactly the way that you want, it looks like it didn't get any results in the last seven days based on my criteria. Anyway, what I'm trying to get around to is this export button. Let me just make the query much broader. Show me all error messages in syslog. You've got export here, and you can export all columns of your results or just the displayed columns, because like I said, you could use either the project statement or you could dynamically interactively adjust your column views down below. So you can pull those files down as CSVs, or you can export to Power BI, which is the Microsoft cloud-based business intelligence software. Now notice that that's grayed out. That's to be expected because this is the playground 
And so we don't have the full access that you normally would in your own subscription. I hope that that makes sense to you. Notice that the help menu over on the right side of the toolbar has an interactive tour and a link to my colleague Robert Kane at Pluralsight's course on mastering the Cousteau query language. And then there's a link for language reference. So don't forget about that. There's some global settings that you can adjust in your own subscription. And also, you should be aware that once you start getting into the flow of reporting on your solutions and your subscriptions and your resources using this KQL log search, you can use the results of a KQL query to generate an alert rule. See this button over here? Of course, in this environment, it's not supported because it's not our environment. But you could, for instance, write a KQL query that looks for all machines in your environment. It could be hybrid, too, because you can onboard your on-premises machines into log analytics as well. You could write a query that show me all machines that are missing this particular hotfix. And you can use that KQL query as the basis of an alert rule, such that whenever a machine comes online in your environment, it doesn't have that hotfix. The next time Azure evaluates the alert rule, that computer will come up in the results, and then you can create an action group to take remediative action. So I hope that this brief demonstration gave you some more insight into KQL and log analytics, and I hope that you'll get a lot of learning benefit and discovery benefit from the Query Playground. As usual in these tutorial videos, I like to leave you with some hand-selected learning resources. First, a link to an explainer on Azure Log Analytics Query Playground. I create short URLs to help you, timw.info forward slash kql1. If you want to learn more about Azure Log Analytics globally, that's timw.info kql2. And then there's plenty of tutorials, as I already showed you, from Microsoft on learning the KQL language. But here's a reference, timw.info forward slash kql3. Awesome. Well, thanks again for your time and attention. I encourage you to follow me on Twitter if you're not doing so already. I'm at Tech Trainer Tim. I post on Microsoft Azure just about every day. You can find my Pluralsight courses, including a wonderful KQL course by my colleague Robert Kane. But my courses are at timw.info forward slash ps, and my website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. I wish you all the best. Take care.